question from the gentleman in the front row. My question is uh, to this, this side of the table. What, what, what are you suggesting? I mean, are you suggesting that we are better off without the oil? Uh, are we, as a Middle East uh, region, will be better, better off without oil? Uh, no, I think that to put this one to bed for once and for all, as I said, I think I would have to be a moron, absolutely mad, absolutely crazy. Let, just, just, let me just repeat that. And at least if I am so, Carol is not so. To have more of anything that is a resource, you're better off. But because of the way that this has been used, and the gentleman earlier asked about the rentier estate, it's well, the way this has been used, it has been used to buy the people, it has been used to have wars. You take the case of Iran. There are Afghanis, two million Afghanis, doing work that Iranians don't want to do anymore. You take Saudi Arabia, your country that I'm very familiar with, there are a lot of jobs there that no Saudi is going to ever take. And I'm sure that's the same thing in Qatar. Oil itself, it, you would have to be stupid. That's not implied by the motion. That is a wonderful thing to have. But the way it has been used... Let me just ask the question whether, whether he agrees with you. Well, yeah. I, think, I think people, like Ramsey said, people who's managing these natural resources is, could be the curse, but not, not the natural resource itself. Because you cannot blame, you know, you cannot say, I have uh, money in my pocket, therefore it's, uh, it's a curse. It should be a blessing if you know how to manage your money. And the uh, way forward, I, I believe, for this uh, region is, is to get uh, a proper uh, type of management or proper type of managers or leaders who can really make use of this oil and make it uh, toward the blessing side rather than the curse side. All right. Lady in red and black, up there at the back. Um, it's been implied a number of times that o without oil, the Middle Eastern governments, uh, the Middle Eastern countries couldn't have risen to power. So are you doubting that the Middle Eastern countries and their minds behind those countries couldn't rise to power without oil? That's from Mr. Nawaf. Yeah, that's a, an excellent point. Um, you always say that when it's very difficult. <laughs> it's a very difficult point. Very difficult point. No, I say it was an excellent point. Yeah, I know. You say it when it's a very difficult point. <laughs> Please answer it. Um, yes, absolutely correct. If it wasn't for oil today, you wouldn't have certain Middle East countries with the international clout, with the political and economic clout that they have. Again, Saudi Arabia today, at no time in its past has there been a Gulf country or actually Middle East country with that much international clout as today because of the oil and because of the situation in the oil market. So you're absolutely correct. Another question. In Islamic teachings, it says that people are tri can be tried by wealth. So uh, if a region is wealthy, it's not necessarily blessed. So my question is um, to those against the motion, um, do you feel that uh, all the people benefiting from the oil or are just certain elites, and if certain elites are just benefiting and not all the Muslims or all the people in the Middle East, then is it really a blessing in the terms of um, a religious, its religious meaning? Ramzi Salman. We, we come back to this thing in Hussein said, it's a wonderful thing to have. Oil is a wonderful thing to have. The only problem is the management. We come again. The only problem is the management. Not necessarily everybody is benefiting from that wealth. Is that your only mm -hmm. argument? And what we have to do is work to be blessed additionally with a better leadership that will distribute the wealth and everybody will benefit. All right, now I forbid. Maybe can, here's another argument. Tim, we can keep on arguing about arguments. Let's just give a real example. If it wasn't for oil, would the Saudi government been able to invest over $50 billion in developing the two places of Mecca and Medina for the billion plus Muslims that come every year for Hajj and Umrah? Can I come again? Carol Nachle. Yes. She's going to answer that. I have another mm -hmm. question for you. If oil has been so good Saudi Arabia, why Saudi Arabia in this case ranks at number 77 according to the United Nations Human Development Index, which measures a country's achievement in terms of education, Technology, knowledge, various, and among, um, I mean, among others, and um, yeah, why would uh, would that be? Just after following the poorest economy of Eastern Europe, like Romania and Macedonia. Your excellent point. Thank you. The, the point being, <laughs> so so, and the answer is. Oh, they're laughing. Oh, excellent. 
Saturated, but you rank how much? 87, you said? 77. 77, but before Number oil. Number 77. Oh, 77. But before yeah. oil, saturated with 170. <laughs> it's had oil for a very long time. What, exactly. for 30 years? Yeah, it's a long Next time. Excuse me. From, long 170, time. from 170 to 77. That's long over time. 100 countries. But my friend, there weren't yeah. that yes. many countries in those days. There were then? The number of countries. No, there were 150 were those days. Now, so, now, now, now there are 170. So you will need another 30 years in order to, be, to reach the top 25, right? Or 30? No, uh, it, depends, it, it depends how many countries, and it depends how, and it depends how you measure it, like on a serious note. It depends really how you measure this human yeah, development Yeah, but don't report. underestimate the progress I mean, in I, other I countries. I mean, if you've seen the literature about it, the, I mean, there are so many questions and answers about the, how they made this human development report, so many, and so much criticism. Well, so I think I mean, it's a reliable uh, so source, I mean, the, It's a tangibility it? issue. Lady in the third row. Um, throughout the whole debate, everyone's been talking about management all the time. Um, give me specific examples of how you want it to be managed. How do you want oil to be managed, both, both sides? Exactly. Can I go first? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Let me give you some examples. First of all, to create a vibrant private sector, you have to get rid of these silly subsidies in all of them. But don't please get upset at me because I had all the data on your country more than on Iran. That's the only reason I'm going to pick on Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia, if you go to the year 1990 and you take the subsidies for fuel, electricity, for agriculture, for water, it amounted to 45% of its GDP was being wasted on those subsidies. Now, what you do, you get rid of the subsidies, you have good governance, the rule of law, and like in the United States, I've got to say something positive about the US, you let the private sector take over. That's what you do. We don't have time to go into more debt, but we haven't created the environment where the private sector feels safe to be able to do all those things. Okay, now I forbid, good, good management. Excellent point, you agree Excellent with me. Point. Why don't we end Excellent. it there? But that was back in 1990. <laughs> Today we're in 2005. Non-oil non private sector growth in Saudi Arabia today has surpassed government sector growth. We're in 2005. Subsidies have gone down. There is a generational gap here. So have per capita incomes. Per You're capita younger, I'm older. Uh, per capita income are skyrocketing. Saudi Arabia in 2003 they was at 9,000. two years ago, were they? Well, if I may finish. Saudi Arabia was at 9,300 and some. This year, they're going to come in at 14,000 in two years. And what were they 20 GD years ago? GDP. 27,000, uh, something like that? The Saudi economy represents over 50% of, the GDP, the, of the, the GDP of the Middle East. They enormously from their high a few years ago. The Saudi economy is 50% of the Middle East today. You don't want to acknowledge it, it but they oil, have dropped If it wasn't for enormously. oil, where would the Saudi economy be? <coughs> Thank Tim, you. Gentlemen in the second row. I think the question was, do we, how do you get the management? Nobody mentioned democracy. True democracy is the way to get the best management. Ah, now I forbade. Do you want to come back on that? Which one? True democracy in Saudi Arabia? <laughs> no, it will never be true democracy in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi Arabia or, I mean, I mean, on a serious note, in Saudi Arabia or in the other Middle East countries. I mean, we... I How mean, about a little more? I mean, I mean, How about we're, a little more I mean we're not going to kid ourselves about that. There oh, will good. be a certain form of democracy. A certain form of democracy. You can use form in quotations. Okay, we don't want to leave the gentleman standing in the second row there. Sir. Okay, if what makes uh, oil a curse is uh, causing fights and wars, in the region. What would the region look like if there was not oil and people still fight for grass areas and water resources as they used to uh, do 70 years ago? Who would like to have a go at it? Hassan? Well, again, I, I totally agree with you that I think we would have fought over water, we would have fought over other resources. That's the nature of man. But I think that the wars would have been less costly. I mean, the poor Iraqis that died and the Iranians that died in that <coughs> war, the two of them put together, approach a million and a half. Over three million people were injured. I don't think that if we had picks and shovels or the sharp knife of my friend even, we could have done that kind of damage. Okay, you, you want to come back on this? Yeah, I think oil uh, is what stopped that war for, uh, for grass areas and water resources. I, for that, I think uh, oil is a blessing for the region. Thank you. I would like to comment Briefly, on the war. Yes. yes. We'll maybe you'll be, interested in, maybe you'll be interested in this statistics from the World Bank, that the probability of a civil conflict is 0.5% in a country with limited natural resources, but 23% in a country where natural resources account for more than 25% of GDP. 
And we know how well projections have been, right? <laughs> All right. Lady, lady at the back. <laughs> but this is a question for those against the motion.